Hey everybody, welcome to Tech for Psych, where we combine the latest neurotechnology, the ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. I'm your medical doctor, confident Dr. Cody Rawl. I've got two devices with me today, the Muse S and the Dream 2. I reviewed both of these devices within the last six months and I've had a ton of questions regarding the difference between the two of them. Both of these devices are marketed by the respective companies for treating sleep problems. But if you do have sleep problems, which ones should you purchase? And in order to answer that question, we'll take a look at the hardware, the software, the price, the comfortability, and the technical support of these two great devices. Stay tuned. Number one, the hardware. The scientific community has been hard at work validating these two devices. We know from previous studies that the Muse headband has EEG signal comparable to gold standard devices, at least in the frontal headband EEG sensors that have the most contact with the skin. It's worthy to note that we're still waiting on third party validation studies for the soft EEG headband sensors of the Muse S. But judging on the company's many collaborations in the past, I predict that that will be successful as well. The Dream Team has also been hard at work with several published studies on the validity of their EEG scores, as well as other metrics for polysomography, the science of clinical sleep studies. For tracking brain waves, the Muse S headband has two frontal EEG sensors with two active temporal EEG sensors that we're used to in the other Muse models, along with three reference electrodes in the front. The Dream 2 uses two occipital EEG sensors with three active forehead sensors and a reference electrode. Both devices have heart rate monitors that track the temporal artery through near infrared light. They also both have motion sensors. Both link up to your phone via Bluetooth, although one distinguishing factor is that the Dream Dream 2 can continue to collect data without a Bluetooth connection throughout the night, but the Muse S needs to be connected to your smartphone to be gathering that data. So pretty comparable when it comes to hardware, but as we'll see, it's not really about how much hardware these devices have, it's more about how the hardware is used. And with the Dream 2 costing $500 and the Muse S costing $300, these capabilities will be important to consider as we move forward. In terms of comfortability, I'd have to say that the Muse S is more comfortable than the Dream 2, but that comes at a significant cost of functionality, and I'll explain that further. So the Muse S has these soft EEG sensors on the band, whereas the Dream 2 still has hard EEG sensors on the inner band. Um, it doesn't make that big of a difference. Uh, the, the Dream 2 still has this soft padding that makes everything really comfortable. In fact, you don't even feel the individual EEG sensors on your scalp. But Muse S really has gone the extra distance of creating proprietary soft EEG technology, which adds to the overall comfortability. One of the other parts of this is that the clasp in the back is very easy to do and uh, redo and adjust for size. And it simply has less contacts on the head. It's just one band that goes around your head. Less contact points for me means more comfortability. Um, in addition, it's lighter. That's one of the big parts of it too, is this module, this detachable module that's on the Muse S that you can take on and off, but you would leave on during the sleep meditation session is lighter, meaning that you don't have as heavy hardware on your head as you do with the Dream 2. So soft EEG sensors, less contacts on the head, and lighter means more comfortability for the Muse S. Okay, so if you take a look at the Dream 2, it's got more contact points. First of all, um, like the Muse S, it's elastic in the back so that you can stretch it to uh, fit on your head properly. And you've got the front EEG sensors here but you've got this additional component up here that rests on top of your head that has the power button and the speaker system. And here's the functionality component. It has the battery. When you charge the Dream, it actually sits in the dock that goes right up underneath it here and charges the battery within this component that sits on top of your head. So it's got more contact points, more uh, sitting on your head, it's not as flexible, it's more stiff, especially where the battery is that rests on top of your head. So if you're, trying, if you're sleeping and you roll over, you've got this hard thing pressing into your head. Again, the device is very comfortable. I'm just being nitpicky and trying to compare it 
to the Muse S, which is what I would say more comfortable. But here comes the functionality component, okay? Both of these devices have EEG sensors. Both of these devices have uh, pulse oximeters. But the Dream 2 has a larger battery, and what it does is track your sleep throughout the entire night. Muse S will track your brain waves and heart rate and body movements as you are winding down for sleep as you're doing the meditation exercises and the AS ASMR exercises. But Dream 2 is built to have enough battery power in this larger segment to last throughout the night to track body movements, uh, brain activity, and heart rate, respiration rate all throughout the night. And that's why the Muse S is good for meditations for getting you to sleep and tracking data during that about 20 minutes, 20 to 45 minutes that you're doing the exercises to get to sleep. But Dream 2 is really designed from the ground up to be a full-on polysomography device that tracks meaningful data throughout the entire night. Uh, it doesn't even have to be connected to your phone via Bluetooth to continue uh, collecting data. And in fact, it, it uh, actually advocates and it itself shuts down the Bluetooth capabilities so that it's not communicating Bluetooth to your phone all night, but it's still collecting data within the device itself and maintaining battery power throughout the night in order to do that. And as we'll see, it's really important data for actually communicating clinically to a sleep doctor about what is going on at night during your sleep in terms of brain waves, heart rate, uh, breath rate, and uh, other measures that comprise the polysomography test. Number three, the software. Okay, so now this is where things get really interesting. So the Muse S is using the same Muse meditation app with some added features for sleep. I love the Muse app. It looks great, it's easy to navigate, and it never fails to work or collect the necessary data. First, you log on to the regular Muse app where you have your standard mind, heart, body, or breath exercises, but there's a new section called Go to Sleep where you can interact with many different soundscapes or guided meditations. Honestly, these are truly enjoyable and have me sleeping like a baby when I use them. They are more of like a ASMR experience and really help you settle down at night for sleep throughout the night or during the day for a quick nap. So you can fall asleep more easily and wake up feeling more refreshed, restored, and ready to take on the day. Now the data that's recorded is just during the meditation exercise when you are going to sleep to show you how the EEG waves are slowing down and other data that show you that you're actually getting to sleep nicely. They don't actually record after the meditation experience is over. This is unlike the Dream app that collects data throughout the entire night. The Dream app has a great color scheme functionality and is organized nicely for your sleep needs. You start the experience by answering a number of questions so that the app gets a better feel for your sleep needs. Then you do a seven day sleep assessment where you wear the headset throughout the night and it records your sleep habits. It then gives you a sleep report at the end of the assessment period. The Dream app has a video coaching program where you can watch videos that deliver educational content based on cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia, which has decades of clinical research behind it. So rather than giving you data on a meditation that helps you go to sleep, it instead tracks data of your regular sleep patterns, gives you a report, and then makes suggestions on how to improve your sleep and links you to a cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia therapist if needed. It also can deliver raw data for clinicians and researchers doing polysomography work. So here's the thing, Muse S, very comfortable, great for the meditations getting down to sleep, but Dream 2, much more of a clinical device that will collect sleep data throughout the night that you can use to talk to a sleep doctor, a sleep clinician in order to communicate uh, where you're having difficulties and allow them to make recommendations on what you can change in uh, your activities during the day leading up to sleep and during sleep so that you can get better quality sleep. So if you've got a mild sleep problem and you are into meditation, I would definitely uh, recommend the Muse S if you really feel like you want to use meditation to improve how to go to sleep. Um, you know, obviously Muse has filled that niche of meditation in their bringing that meditation niche out into the sleep component. So when you consider the Muse S, that's how you really should uh, factor in your decision on whether you should get the Muse S or not. 
You know, are you into meditation? Do you want to use meditation to fix your sleep problems? Do you want to try some other interesting things like lucid dreaming uh, meditation in order to get lu into lucid dreaming at night? Um, you know, if those are your objectives, I would recommend the Muse S. But if you've got a true clinical sleep problem and you're really looking to um, maybe work with a provider to, to fix those problems, I would go with the Dream 2 because it actually tracks the data throughout the night about what is truly happening with your sleep and allows the facilitation of that conversation with your provider about what you can do to improve. Also, if you are a sleep researcher and you want to be collecting data throughout the night, whether you're a clinician or a research scientist, I would recommend the Dream 2 because again, it is collecting data throughout the night. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of sleep clinics that are going to be using devices like the Dream 2 in order to substitute for the bulky, expensive, and out-of-date polysomography equipment that is in most of those clinics these days. So this has been designed from the ground up to replace that to assist people that have chronic insomnia and their physicians in order to treat that with, as we discussed earlier, cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia as those videos in the Dream app uh, show you. So much from the ground up, more clinical based, um, highly recommend the Dream 2. If you want to focus on meditation and how meditation influences sleep, go with the Muse S. So hopefully that comparison was helpful. Really take a look at your needs, your wants, your price range, and factor all those in when deciding whether to purchase the Muse S or the Dream 2 for your sleep problems. This is Dr. Cody Rawl with Tech vs. Psych. Thanks so much for listening. We'll be back again next week with more content. Thank you so much.